Good morning, Dr. Asker here. Um, Minister, you're very, very welcome to, to the House today. It's always good to see you here um, to discuss this very important thing, um, progressing disability services programme and assessment of needs. Um, I really welcome your opening statement, your, your, your uh, robust and honest um, mm -hmm. contribution, and it's always to be welcomed. Um, robust and honesty from a minister is always to be welcomed. Um, we in very, Fianna Fáil very welcome this debate, and we know we've, we've always been advocates for, for people with disabilities, working to, to, to assist, toward, working towards a rights-based model, um, and I'm very glad that you're at the helm of this minister. Um, and one thing that crossed my mind when, when you were speaking there, Minister, was on the lack of, of, of um, movement on the, the, your, the things from, from the Department of Health over to you. And if you could give us a, an update on, on that, that would be, uh, that would be very welcome. And as I, I said, you know, it really is excellent to have a champion like you fighting for the rights of people with disabilities. There is no one in this Oireachtas that knows the challenges um, in meeting and demands of dis 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 children's disabilities better than you. Um, I know you're acutely aware how the the delays and the discrepancy of on the impacts on children and their families and your availability, your constant availability and your openness to meeting with families and disability organisations is, is always so welcomed and appreciated. The PDS is a significant programme of reform that will change, we hope, the way that we deliver services and supports for children with complex needs. And as we all know, the children's disability services in Ireland have developed in an ad hoc manner, whereas some children have received excellent service and, and others have received none. As well, as, well as, you know, as you highlighted, the provision of services are currently incredibly inequitable and varies depending on the child's disability, their age, where they go to school, where they live. And this equity as inequity um, is absolutely de deplorable and you know, it, clearly what was in place was not working. And now, Minister, we must look critically and constructively at the proposed system and just make sure that, to be flexible and to ensure that you know, what, is, what we are proposing, that it will in, in fact work and um, that there are you know, the mechanisms to review this as we move forward um, with the programme because you know we can't we can't expect that one strategy will fit all that things will will need to be amended that we, that we have flexibility written in the system to make sure that it's working for for each um, CHO because we know there's different there's different needs in in CHO but we, we have a we have a um, we need a streamline of, of I suppose of um, attitude um, across across all boards, and as you rightly said, last year, you know, this government provided nearly eight million to address that backlog um, of assessment, assessment of need. And I really have to say, I'm incredibly disappointed to hear of the back that that um, we have increased so so dramatically um, from all that excellent work during a pandemic, and um, that we have. So I would just like a question, Minister. How have we let, how has the HSE let that assessment of need backlog, backlog build back up? Um, you know, as I said, after a huge investment, and is the SOP not working? Um, you know, because we do, as I said, um, a constant review of all our actions need to be, need to be taken. Um, you know, and we, we go back into, you know, the, uh, you know, that relationship between the in intervention and the assessments of needs, and it, as you know, rightly highlighted, it needs to be far more co cohesive. And historically, you know, this has been difficult because we have no standard way of performing assessments. And, and in you know, one clinician in one part of Ireland does an assessment, how it does assessment may be entirely different um, from the way another another clinician will do it. Um, so I suppose it, it, it led to you know a possibility of you know conservative clinicians being very conservative and spending a great deal of time doing assessments um, you know, and as you say you know, the, the PDS programme is an integral part of our Sláinte Care um, and, and you know, if we had an update on, on from your point of view on that Sláinte Care health and those reforms because I know that is a key, a key priority for you Minister and a key priority for this government. Um, we, have a, we, you know, we, we, have, we, we have to be positive about this we have to be, you know, be, you know, constructive, and we have to look for, look to the future about how we're going to, you know, um, move towards that that social model, model away from that, um, away from the medical model, because children, you know, these children are not sick. They just need therapy. They need their, their, they need needs. They're not sick children. So it's really, really, you know, um, a progressive that we are moving away from, you know, that that from the Department of Health because these children are not sick. They need help. They need therapies to be their best selves. Um, and you know, this issue of waiting listed, I am contacted regularly about. Um, you know, we. 
I'm, I suppose I'm, I'm not going to go, go into that one because my time is going up. And I just have a few, a few questions, Minister. That I would like extra questions. I'd like to ask. You know, has the you know HSE drafted a clinical ba baseline for each team to ensure that they're not oversubscribed? Has the HSE provided a minister for, for breakdown of numbers of children assigned to each team? What clinical oversight mechanisms do the HSE have in place to ensure teams are not burned out? And has the HSE considered any alternative measures such as technology to help um, the, the, tackle those therapy waiting lists? And at the Disability Matters Com Committee last um, this, well, this year, I'm not sure what the date, um, Dr. Cattle Morgan, of the Head of Operations of Disability Services, said the cult, um, there's an old there's a quotation, um, a culture eats strategy for breakfast, and we can pour all the resources we want um, but if there is not a fundamental change in how clinicians work, there is no standardised norms in how we perform interventions. Our system is, of, is one of assessments only, and we create a waiting list for assessment, assessments and then another for intervention. And that must stop. We must move to a scenario where children are on the intervention pathway from the get-go. So I suppose, um, how is that culture um, that, e that is eating breakfast um, uh, changing? Thank you. Thank you, Senator.